I was so sure that the very next day that my mother was going to die and that I went to my father and um, I sat down and I said to my father, I said, my mother doesn't have long left to live. And he looked at me and he said, you're full of shh, shh, sugar. And um, I don't want to say the other words, you know. He says, I'm 10 years older than your mother. And he says, I've been long dead before your mother. And this is the perfect example of folks where age does not gauge death. God can call us at any moment in time. So I says, Daddy, you don't understand what I'm saying. You don't know where I'm coming from and you don't understand me because my daddy um, has never really sat down to understand my conversion story to come coming to Christ, that anointing that um, fell afresh in me um, in my early 30s. So he says, oh, you're full of it. He says, I'll be long dead for your mother. And I says, no, I says, Dad, you mark my words. So <clears throat> six months later, I was back home for a trip. And I was sat with my little girl, Aisling. Hi, Aisling. Daddy loves you so much. Uh, back in a little school at home, down in Ennis in County Clare. And um, I was very much busy that year, settling, just getting settled at home. And one night, I was in adoration. It was actually the night before I was due to go back to the States the next day. And my mother was at home. I went into adoration and I had this um, calling within my soul, go and see your mother, go and see your mother, go and see your mother. So I left the adoration chapel and at, uh, about a couple of hundred yards down the street, um, there was a few friends of mine um, that were playing a bit of music, a wee bit of a music session. So I went in to say goodbye. So I popped my head into the door and I said, lads, I said Good goodbye, God bless you, I'll see you soon, I'm back home for Christmas. And I said, sit down and sing a few songs. So anyways, I went, sat down and sang a couple of songs and then I had this urgency to go home and see my mum. So I went home and um, I was my, with my mother and I'm sitting at the right hand side of the bed. My mum was on her iPad, happy out, God bless her. And um, probably looking at other wee prayers and holy things, you know, holy videos. And um, I sat down and I started sharing with my mum. We talked about Jesus and Our Lady all the time and about the faith and um, how much I loved Jesus and how much I loved Our Lady and how much I loved her. And I said, Mommy, see when you die? And she looked at me and she went, yes, son. I said, you're going straight to heaven. And she looked at me and she says, do you think so, son? And I says, oh, I know so, Mum. I said, you're going straight to heaven. The elevator goes straight up and doesn't stop. I says, Mommy, you're a little saint. I said, see when you get into heaven. I said, will you please put in a good word for me to Jesus? I said, I haven't walked the straightest path in my life, Mum. I went the way of the world at a very young age, mummy. She said, son, when I get to heaven, I will put, I'll keep a place right beside me for you. And I know to this day, folks, that um, that, 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 that my mum's in heaven and that she's truly with Jesus and our lady. Um, what a grace and a blessing to share that moment with my mother. Um, the very next moment, or the very next morning, I, I um, went over to say goodbye to my mother and um, I knocked the door and and just said, mum, I said, listen, I've got to go back. I said, I'm very sorry. I haven't had a chance to to spend much time here this this trip. I says, I'm coming home in 12 weeks time. And I said, we'll have a lovely Christmas together. And sadly, folks, five and a half weeks later, upon my return back to the States, my poor mother dropped dead of a massive heart attack. And I got the call that Sunday night at 10.30, p.m. in Boston, which would have been 3.30 a.m. in at home. And um, it was devastating, you know. Um, but I thank God for my faith. I thank God for my knowing. Um, I thank God for my conversion. I thank God for my mother, that she was my mother, this precious woman that gave birth to me, that brought me into the world, that nurtured me and looked after me and loved me. And I'm going to leave you with this thought. If my earthly mother said to me, Anthony, when I go home to heaven, I'm going to keep a place right beside me for you. That's the desire of my earthly mother. How much more does our heavenly mother desire our safe return back home, back through that narrow gate and back home into heaven? Our lady seeks in her heart to reserve a place in heaven for us. She seeks in her heart to draw us to the foot of the cross, to draw us closer to her son, 
so that we may return home to heaven. And this is the thing, folks. What a what a um, a godless world that we're living in right now. And there's, you know, the faith is struggling. People are struggling with faith right now. And that's the reason why the Lord has me doing these little videos and sharing these. It's the reason why I open up to inspire souls. I know that many people looking in here have lost loved ones, but we must continue to pray for them, intercede for them, so that their prayers will come back and they'll intercede for us as well. Um, and that it's in death that you enter into eternal life. And the key is, folks, is remaining in a state of grace, going to confessions, so that Our Lady can truly work in your heart, so that Jesus can truly work in your heart and transform you and bring you back through that narrow gate and back home into heaven. So I'm going to leave you with that little thought. Ave Maria, Aviva Christore, long live Christ our King. Amen.